Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm here today to work in my Ring Bang Junk Journal again. Uh, it's the one I'm making with the gorgeous papers from Nanine at Collage Type, who so kindly gifted them to me. So, what are we up to today? Today I want to make some full-size envelopes from kit pages. Yeah, so I'll pop the journal away. If you've not seen it and you want to, I will link the playlist in the description. So, I've got these sheets, they're, the, they're pretty neutral ones, because then I can add other things to them from the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, from the kit. And I'm going to make an envelope from each of these A4 sheets of paper, well, card. I've printed it on 160 GSM card. Right, I've measured the size that I want my envelope to be, which is eight and a quarter by five and a quarter. Now, in the UK, A4, the width is eight and a quarter, so that's perfect already. So, jobs are good, and that's why I've gone and printed it borderless. Yeah, if you can't print borderless, you can do exactly the same thing. Your envelope just won't be quite the same height, and it doesn't matter. You can have any size. Right, I'm going to do two envelopes and I want them to be in the journal facing each other. So I want to do a left and a right handed envelope. So I'm not even going to bother checking which way around I've got my first piece of card. <laughs> uh, I will then just adjust the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it so that we've got the front of the envelope. Then we've got the lip and somewhere in that we're going to have a crease <laughs> right we want the envelope to be five and a quarter inches wide so we know the set middle section wants to be five and a quarter inches now i've made these before so i know my flap if i make it however big you make the flap you, that will just be shorter if you make this flap bigger your inside of the envelope will be shorter. Does that even make sense? I don't know. Anyway, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it this way, actually. So I'm going to score. I might, I might as well start from that side, aren't I? Mm. Yeah. Now I'm going to do it that way. <laughs> I don't know why, because I'm making one each way. It doesn't matter. So the flap on the envelope is going to be two inches. So I'm going to score it two. Then the back section of my envelope wants to be five and a quarter inches wide, so I'm going to score at seven and a quarter. Yeah, and then when we turn this over and fold it, it's going to be an envelope. It's very easy. I don't even know if this warrants a video. It's so easy. But if you've never done anything like this before, yeah, you might find it interesting. So I'm then going to fold that there, there we have it, that's going to be an envelope, we'll pop it in there with the holes then we'll have a flap and an envelope that you can tuck things into, so there we go. Then you've just got to decide do you want to shape that or keep it straight. I think what I might do is just punch a notch out with one of my circle punches. So I'm going to grab one of my larger circle punches. In fact, this is probably the largest I've got. Is it two and a half or two and a quarter? It's my two and a half inch one. If you don't have a circle punch, just get something circular, such as a cup or yeah, a roll of sellotape. And you can draw a semicircle and then cut around. I'm lucky enough to have the punches, so I'm going to use them. I'm not going to be all perfect and get it in the middle. Make sure you don't go too far in that it won't cover with your flap, though. So I'm now just going to eyeball this. And, yeah. Yeah, so that's all I've got. And that does cover... So that is going to be my envelope. Right, here's the tricky part, what I always find. I've got to turn this round now in my head because I want to do another one and I want the writing to go the same way. Because <laughs> I, I, I want them to face each other in the journal. I just think that would look good for some reason. I don't know why. I just do. So there's one. <laughs> 
So common sense tells me I just need to do it the opposite way. Yeah, I need to do it from the right hand side, don't I? Yeah, yeah, I do. That wants to be the flap, that's the middle and that's the front, I think. Yeah, I do. So, 11, hmm. I'm just going to, I'll put my paper upside down to do it. So, let's see if this works. Two inch flap, so I'll score. Then a five and a quarter inch middle, so I'm going to score at seven and a quarter. And I'm going to turn it upside down and do my folding. I just thought it would look odd if the uh, <laughs> writing were one way up on one and one and other. You could, of course, use a kit page. And, yeah, because I want that hotel to be the correct way on that. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the hotel is the right way up where it says that. So that will be one envelope and that will be the other. I now need to get that semicircle in the same place to make it look nice and even so i'm just going to put put those together and i'm going to just mark that with a pencil so when i chomp this one it looks roughly the same as other don't matter then if they're slightly too up or high up or slightly too low down i suppose i could have put them both together and chomped them at the same time but then i don't know if my circle punch would have liked that it might have groaned at me. There we go. So, we now have two envelopes. Yay! Right, the most of the work on these is going to be done after what we put on. That's why I didn't want a fancy page. I didn't want roses getting folded in the middle and you know what I mean. So I picked this plain kit page. I don't mind that the writing goes upwards ways. That's not a concern for me. So I think I'm going to round those corners as well. I think that'll look good. Grab your corner round a woman. I'm going to use medium size one. My seven millimeter. Yep, I like that. I could have even got away with a big one. I'm going to do a big one. Be a devil. Ooh. 10 millimetre, look at this. Very awkward using it. I do find that I can get this punch, I can use it better upside down. That might just be a me thing. Yeah. There we go. I've not decided if I want to sew the whole way around it or just glue it. <clears throat> I want to sew down there. Um, I think it needs sewing, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So, let's sew, sew. I'm going to grab my glue first because I think as well as having it sewed to hold it together, it needs glue as well. I'm going to use my Anita's Tacky Glue that I'm becoming a fan of. Does tend to wrinkle a little bit easier if you stick in thin paper, though I've noticed. But yeah, if nozzles already blocked up, I'll be a one and happy bunny. Let's have a look, see what's occurring. Ooh, that wouldn't have been good if it had gone all over my project. I'm just gonna try squeezing it out onto. I'll use this baby wipe that I used to clean the sewing machine. <laughs> it was dusty. The nozzle's blocked up, so I'm already thinking we need to use this with a metal tip. Let's clear it out, see what occurs. Oh, I'm going to put glue in the wrong place then. Yeah, it's coming out lovely now. I suppose that's no hardship, is it? A little poke with a pin before you start when it's so much cheaper. I'm not putting loads of glue on because we're going to stitch as well. I'm not going to stitch across there, it's rather thin paper. Rather thin, rather thin card. 
It's not, why would I keep calling it paper when it's card? Could be worse. I have them days when I don't know a stamp from a punch. I think I need to just swizz down that whip bone folder. Make sure it's uh, done properly. There we go. And then I'm just going to stitch. I'll start stitching here. I'm going to go down, along, up. Because then what's going to happen is when you put things in this envelope, you're not going to get anything stuck down where the rings are or ram it in too far and damage it. Yeah, there'll be a line of stitching that stops you putting anything in further than that. Yeah, so I'll start there along, down, da, da. then I'm going to go all the way around there. Yeah, and I'm going to do the sewing on this side so it looks neat on the flap. Right, so that's one glued. I'm not going to actually sew on camera because I'm trying to get an angle to sew. I managed it once, but I had to really reach and then my sewing was very, very wonky and I don't want really wonky sewing on this I don't mind a bit of wonkiness but when I mean wonky I mean wonky other than that all you can see it's top of the sewing machine which is no fun for anyone is it although I did spend uh, a good part well I didn't spend the whole hour watching it with my daughter yeah favorite k-pop group bts they released a one hour long video of an animated butter pat melting. Ooh, teaser for their new video, yeah. How thrilling was that? It's got millions of views. I said to her, I says, well, everything will work, I put in my YouTube videos. And BTS can get millions of views by watching butter melt. That's akin to watching paint dry, isn't it? Right, so I'm just going to sew those and I'll be back in two ticks. And I'm back. I had a slight brainwave as well before I did my sewing. It would have been a good idea to know how wide I wanted this other stitching to be. So I just turned it over and I took, well, what is now my template. Because I lost my template early on, didn't I? And I marked in pencil where the holes were going to be punched. Yeah. You see, so they're now in the middle of where I stitched. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's very annoying. So, I've grabbed my hole punch as well. So, I'm now going to put these together and I'm going to punch them both at the same time. In the reason being, if I get the punching slightly out on one and one ends up higher or like that, it's going to displease me greatly. I don't anticipate punching it in the wrong place, but just in case I do. So, I'm going to double check it again with my inserts to make sure the holes are in the right place they are so i'm now confident in punching them that's one and that's oh i can't see that that's two there we go so that's where it's going to fasten into the ring bound journal i'll grab my silver eyelet which I'm getting very low on. <clears throat> Excuse me, two minutes. That's better. I've been in, had a drink and I've grabbed a lozenge. I should have been ready with that. Drinking a lozenge, I always need that. Or I end up like, yeah, Kermit the Frog. So I'm going to put the eyelets through like so. Yeah. I'm doing this just to make sure they're going to be, I want all the eyelets at the front when you go through the journal, yeah. So if I do that, it will remind me which way to put these eyelets in. Right. That's one. Two. This way for these ones. Well, I'll tell you what I haven't done. I haven't burnished the stitching. It'll look much neater when I've burnished it. There we 
go, grab my foam folder. I went a little bit wonky on that one, I don't know how. <laughs> just the sewing machine just decided to veer off on its own course. That's why I like to do the stitching before I put the eyelets in because if you do the eyelets first, your sewing machine will definitely veer off when your foot hits the eyelet. So that's why I like to do them this way around. I did envelopes like this when I did a ring bound one before, but I didn't do two facing each other. <laughs> Recipe for disaster. Luckily, it hasn't gone wrong. It's I've actually done it. I find it really difficult me to turn something completely round. I mean, that extends to everything in my life. Oh, wow. If you ever saw me when I was younger in aerobics class, can't do it to save my life. I just can't. I can't watch someone do something and turn it round in my head. I suppose these days when we've got fancy gyms with full length mirrors, I would much rather look at the back of the instructor. But then I don't think I would keep looking at the back. I'd watch them in the mirror. I don't know. You should have seen me when I used to do a bit of dancing with kids in the uh, foundation unit. If it were rainy lunchtime, because I were uh, dinner lady, yeah. I know that's not a posh word for it now. School meals supervisor, yeah. Dinner lady. And I'd keep them inside and we'd have some time. For part of time, we'd have a video on them, just some dancing or something. They could do it and I couldn't. What's that all about? Three and four year olds could do what I couldn't. Right, let's bring the whole binder in and have a look what these are going to look like in it. So, yeah, I had to take the front cover off and this insert <laughs> to use one as a template. Sweet, there we go. And I've got to decide what I'll fasten that while I flick through. To be honest, I've not put many at pages where I actually want them yet. I'll probably... I think they'd, they'd be good between those two inserts and move that envelope somewhere else. Yeah, that's what I might do. So let's take you out, mister. And let's pop these in. Before I go doing anything else on them, I just want to make sure they fit and everything's hunky-dory. Because if, if they're not, there's no point going any further, is there? Oh, yeah. I like that. So that's how they're going to go. There we go. So it's a bit like that. We'll come to it. You'll think it's just a page. And we can put a pocket on that and do something with it. And then you'll realise, oh, no. You turn one over and you've got two envelopes. I think I'm just going to fasten these with a Velcro fastener. I'll, I don't know if I'm going to put one... I may put one there and one there, so two Velcro fasteners, yeah. So I'll grab those. I didn't want to do anything bulky on them. Hello, Velcro fasteners, where are you? If you've seen my Friday packages, you'll know I keep them just to the side of me in a drawer. And for some reason, I can't find them. Although I've definitely not moved them. Oh, right, there you are. Velcro. I've got these listed on my Amazon storefront. Uh, when you do a search on Amazon, you don't. These don't come up. A smaller pack comes up that's far more expensive. But then when you look down a good four or five pages, you come across these, and you literally get four times as many for your money. So if you want those, go there and yeah, find the cheaper ones. Right, I'm going to put the grabby side, as I call it, the hard plastic side on here. I think I'm going to put it, yeah, I'm going to pop one there and then one the other side of the semicircle. Because I think one is not going to hold it nicely enough. And I have found if you put them too far apart, they grab so well that you risk tearing your flap when you pull them apart. 
Izzy B at Izzy B's Craft Creations got me into using these. I love them. These are the low profile ones. They are very thin. You can buy cheaper ones, but they're much thicker. They have the uses, but I do prefer the Velcro branded ones for this. Now, this is how I do them. I then put my furry one on top. Furry one. Yeah, you'll hear me refer to Velcro as grabby ones and furry ones. So that's the furry ones on the grabby ones. And then I'm going to close the envelope. Yeah, so that holds it nicely. I've been two there. And I'm not going to open that again till they've had a chance to stick well. So let's put some more furry ones on these grabby ones. Oh, I've got three off there. They're like slightly joined together. Oh, don't put it in the wrong place with it. I don't like to touch the glue on that side for too long. I only like to touch the edge. Oh, they're very sticky. I've never needed to put extra glue on them. I've got projects that I've made that are still hanging about, things I've made for kids. The glue's not come off. So, there we have our envelopes. Let's try opening this one now. There you go, that opens nicely. I'm quite happy with those. Yeah. And I'm going to do, I don't know what I'm going to decorate them with. I just really wanted to get the construction out of the way. I've not really thought much past that. We could have rounded the corner. We didn't need to, they're not rounded, but mine to look nice. So that's something to think about if you're following along. I mean, I quite often think of things I could have done after I've done it. But then I try and remember them for my next project. Oh, that's not the bag that went in. So, that's that. I'm going to bring over some bits of ephemera from the kit gone ahead and cut some bits out and pop them in a little plastic folder where's that gone do, do. i think it's hiding behind my sewing machine i'm just gonna put the sewing machine down on the floor and now i'll finish with it oh. there we go there we go it's a thrilling youtube video watching some woman move furniture Where's it gone? I'm brilliantly at losing things. Watch it be underneath something. Well, we've got the envelopes done, haven't we, anyway? Let's put the lid on the eyelets before we lose them. See what I could do? I could use some of the stickers that I used on the tags. That might be nice. That, I think, needs some pockets, and that's going to be a whole other video. I think on here, a nice little cluster or just some of these rose stickers if i have rose i do have roses left because i bought another pack and mixed them in they don't have to be roses though do they oh that's nice i think i used that on one of the tags so that's a rose that one's a little large isn't it so that'd be lovely on there find another rose yeah you can tell roses are my favorite all my packs i've got loads of these stickers left without any roses in that's a cute that's a little bit too red for this project we're doing pink roses that's a nice one that one might be a bit small so yeah we're looking a bit roseless Ooh, that one's lovely yeah i think that's all i'm going to do on that i'm going to put some roses on yeah we don't need anything on there they both open up lovely and you can get loads of ephemera in there and what i will do is any unused ephemera from the kit i will pop in there or maybe a full sheet we could 
if you folded it in three you could fit almost a full sheet of A4 in. So I'm going to leave it there for today and I'll be back I'll be back in embellishing mode tomorrow. We've got a few more journal cards to make, a couple more tags to make, and I may have had some brainwave about what actually I want to do for this today. But we've got the envelopes made. You can then embellish them however you want. So thank you very much for joining me. I will put the playlist down for the whole ring bound junk journal. Um, assuming many of you just want to know how to make the pages anyway to embellish them your style. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.